Hi, I'm Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Every time I do a trunk show, I show this wall hanging. I've fallen in love with the Dresden, and I show a lot of different Dresden things, and this is one of them. And one of the reasons I did this is because I've used all different parts of the Dresden, from the large tip to the middle to the, to the smallest part on the Dresden, and it just makes a really fun wall hanging. And so I wanted to do a tutorial for that because everybody keeps asking about it, and so here it is. The other thing that's going to be fun about this is that this is really into a, like a, a window into how my brain works, so you'll get to see how I figure things out. Um, so what we're going to do need for this is this is made with one charm pack, and then we're going to have some yardage. So we're going to have about a quarter of a yard for our pot, about a quarter of a yard for our circles, and about a quarter of a yard for our stems and leaves. And this is probably going to be more than you need. It's, it's kind of a scrappy thing. But I do, I do know that you are going to need one charm pack. So we're going to do that. I'm going to make it out of this bright color. This is um, Wyndham Fabrics. It's basic bright, so it's always available. And it's just really this fun, happy, bright charm pack. Lots of fun in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of my charms in half. And uh, the reason I'm going to do this is because I am going to make this edge right here. When I sew these pieces together, this is going to tell me how tall my background piece needs to be. And then I'm going to sew this picket fence together right here, and that's going to tell me how wide my background needs to be. So I start with my pieces, and you can see right here I have my picket fence. And let me show you how easy it is to do this. So we're just going to take one of these charms right here, and we're going to cut it in half, just right in half. So now you're going to take your two and a half by five inch strip and you're going to fold it in half like this and we're going to sew straight across the top. Just that simple. So I'm, let's come over here and we'll do that. I'm going to go a quarter of an inch in and I'm going to back stitch this a little bit. Not totally necessary, but I don't really want it to come out. So then I'm going to trim off these threads right here and I'm going to trim this point a little bit just to take some of the bulk out. And when I flip this, it now becomes a picket. It has a little picket on the top. We can iron that down. So we're just going to press this down and this is going to give you that cute picket look. And you're going to cut 12 of those and sew them together. So once you get your 12 pieces sewn together, that's going to give you the width for your background fabric. And then I went ahead and sewed eight half charms together and that gives me the height of my background fabric. And so, uh, so that's just a good thing to go on. However tall you want it, you're going to sew that many halves together. You know, and you can decide this one is a little bit shorter, but this you really can make this your own. And so, you know, don't be afraid if you decide you want only want, you know, eight of these, you know, whatever you want to do, you can do. And so I'm just telling you how I think and how I got the measurements for this one. So I put 12 of these this picket fences together right here, and I'm going to pin those on and uh, to just to hold it on there. So when I go to sew these down, you can stitch these just like you'd stitch binding. So, it, you know, it would just it would just work that easy. So then this piece is going to come over here on the side like this and I'm going to make sure it matches up and it's going to match up just perfectly. So I have two of these sides right here. One more, where is it? Oh, here it is right here. So here's my other side like that. And we'd, we're going to sew our sides on. And then we're going to sew, put in a piece across the top right here, like that. So that's going to give us our frame to work with. And then we just have to create our pot and flowers. Now the flowers are really fun. So with my flowers, I made three different sizes. I made this big size, I made the five inch size, and I made this little tiny two inch size. So let's start with the small one and um, show you how to do that. Now remember, you're just making Dresdens, so any way you want to do them, uh, I mean, they work the same. They're, you don't have to be worried or confused. They all, they all work the same. You just cut them and they're just good to go. So let's start with the baby flower. And what I did with that 
was I took three, um, I took blue, I wanted to make them blues and yellows. So I took three of those like this and three charms only and I folded them in half like this. Then I took my Dresden tool and I laid it right on the edge just like this. So you can see right here if I cover the whole thing that's a two and a half inch Dresden blade and I'm going to cut I'm going to go ahead and cut these like this. Don't want them to move like that. And then I'm going to cut another one. I'll turn my blade up this way, keeping it on the two and a half inch line. And then bring my blade back around like this. Let me make sure that slid a little bit so I can fix that right here, right now. And take that corner out. And then we're going to cut these in half. So these are tiny little Dresdens. And you can use your ruler. It's probably better than, than guessing. But the fun thing about a Dresden is that they're all done exactly the same way. And they look like you just worked so hard when really all you did was just like the picket fence, we take the white end, we fold it right sides together, and then we're just going to sew this straight across. So I'm going to sew a few of these so you can see what happens. So I've got these little tiny ones here. I line them up right sides together, fold them, sew a quarter of an inch. Then I got another one in there. I'm going to just slide the next one in. And one more. And then I'm going to cut these apart. And you're going to do this to all of these. You need 18 of these to make the little tiny flower. So here's my little, my little guys. And you will see, I'm just going to clip out that little front part right there and flip. And there's your little tiny Dresden. How adorable is that? So you're going to do that, you're going to do that 18 times. And with three charms, you'll get enough to do, um, you'll get plenty of those. So here's my little flower right here, and I'm just going to stick him on here for a minute. And then we're going to talk about the medium flower. The medium flower is uh, the easiest one to me because it's, you use two squares, and we're going to pull out an orange and how about this fun polka dot one? And you're going to use the Dresden up to the five inch mark like this. And we're going to cut our blade. I'm going to go over to the over to the edge here. Cut our blade this way and that way. And then we're going to flip this and cut the next one just like this. So you're going to cut 10 charm packs up, which is going to give you 20 blades. You'll need 20 blades for this big flower. So then, of course, we're just doing the same thing. We're going to go over, and we are going to fold these and sew these, and we'll do that to a couple of these. Once I realized I could make a Dresden, you know, the Dresden was really my unicorn. I just really... Gosh, you know, they looked so difficult to me, and I just didn't know I could make one. And once I realized I could have, I started seeing Dresdens everywhere. You know, they were, <laughs> they were in flower pots, on Christmas things. I made the Dresden turkey. I did all kinds of things with it because I knew I could do it. And I just, oh, I just fell in love with it. So this wall hanging um, came from, from that excitement of realizing that I really could make a Dresden. So then we're going to iron this down. And I'll iron this one too. And then basically, you just lay these right sides together and you do a quarter inch seam all the way down the side. And when you get 20 of those together, you're going to have your, your big flower like this. This is going to be your big um, pieces. Now, sometimes these don't lay exactly flat. And, um, and if you just steam them a little bit, 
they'll lay down. But if you find that you have like really big gaps or something like that, you can just take in your seams a little bit and, and that'll work. You know, you just want it to be flat because you're going to cover all this up with a circle. So then we've got the big flower. Now this big flower, I love the look of it. this. It's a little bit more tricky um, because what we're going to do on it is we are going to use the whole wide part of the Dresden up here. So I'm going to kind of center this on here and I'm going to put a little mark like this. And I'm going to mark on either side because if we use this wide end down here as the bottom, our flower is going to be like this huge and we want it to be small, tiny. So then we're going to slide our Dresden down here like this, keeping it in the middle and we're going to mark, mark our, little, uh, our little point and we're going to draw a line from the wide side to the small side like this. And then we're just going to cut that off. You don't actually have to draw the line if you just want to rotary cut it uh, as you match up your ruler. Sometimes it's nice to see that drawn line. So this is going to be the blade for our big flower. So then what we're going to do, again, fold it right sides together, so straight across the top. And you can layer those in probably four. I would say you don't want to do too much more than four. Uh, it gets a little hard to cut. So then here is this big guy and we're going to flip him and iron him. And you can see that we get a petal that looks like this that is going to fit right in there and just, I mean it's just going to come out with this darling little flower. So now let's talk about our pot for a minute. I've made our pot using the, um, the big tumbler template. So I, may, I used this template and cut out the pot. One of the things that I did was I ironed under all the edges a quarter of an inch. And remember, with this kind of stuff, there are several ways to applique. You can do some iron on, on this and, and just press it down. You can machine stitch raw applique, but I'm going to use this as a hand project. So I'm going to sew along this edge just like I would normally applique uh, a Dresden blade onto the front of a, um, of a square or anything. I'm just going to sew them on by hand and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later because that's a really easy stitch. I call it a, uh, a ladder stitch. It's a binding stitch. So now I have my pot and I have my three flowers and we need a stem. So what I've done is I've cut two and a half inches of, of uh, a green for my stem and I'm just going to fold this in half and iron it. This is a really, really cool way to do stems because um, they just go together. It just lays down so nice and it looks like you applique and spend a lot of time on it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure out a stem for this flower and I'm just going to kind of cut that off. And I'm going to measure a stem for this flower and cut that off. And I'm going to measure a stem for this flower and cut that one off. We might want to move that one up there just a little bit. It's always a good idea to give you some a little bit extra room. Now with the rest of this piece, I'm going to make some Dresden leaves. Now I don't have Dresden leaves on here, but I'm going to make Dresden leaves out of this because I can, because we can do Dresdens out of everything. All right, so I'm going to lay this down here like this and I think I might want three leaves. So I'm just kind of um, folding up my piece and I'm going to put it on the, um, well you can put it on any size you want. I'm going to use the four I think and just cut out three little blades. I'm going to have to turn this around and there we go. I'll cut this other side. It doesn't always work for me to cut going the other direction. Make sure this top piece is flat. And then we're just going to sew this across like this and make our, our leaves and it's just exactly the same thing. One thing I do different on the leaf is when I 
because this is going to be a standalone leaf, when I fold it like this, I'm just going to fold it, and then I'm going to press these sides under a quarter of an inch so they're just on there ready to go. Just like this on both sides. And then this makes a cute little leaf and you can just set it up under that stem. Now let me show you how I do this stem because this is a really, really fun way to do stems. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move some of these things off of here. I'm going to draw a line where I want my stem to go. All right, I'm going to draw a line right here. This is where I want my short stem to go. I'm going to draw a line right here. This is where I want my long stem to go. And I'm going to draw a line over here because this is where I want this stem to go. And so now I'm going to take this, this backing right here and I'm going to sew my stems on. And the stem is, this is a really fun way to, anytime you need to applicate any kind of a stem, this is a really cool way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay our stem piece right on the line, just on like that, and we're going to sew over here a quarter of an inch. Okay? So let's do that real quick. When you need a stem for anything, this is a great way to do it. All right, so a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to go ahead and put on all three of these stems. So now that I have these stems all sewn on here, we take it to the ironing board and we're just going to fold this over just like that and it gives you one side that is completely finished and sewed on and all you have to do is either top stitch or hand sew down the other side and it's a really easy way to put on a stem. And we don't have to worry about the top or the bottom because the pot is going to cover the bottom so let's add our pot now. We'll put that right on there and I'll pin it on. Just like this. We've got our sides that got all messed up because I whipped it apart. And our top. We've got our three big flowers. Here's our, here's our little tiny one. Here's our big one. And then here's the giant big one up here. And now we need to do the circles for the centers. That's really all that's left. We've even done our leaf. Where's our leaf? Here it is. We've done our leaf and you can do two or three of those and I like to kind of sit them in at an angle right there. Um, and now we have to do the center for our circles. So to make a circle for the middle of your flower, you're going to look around your house and you're going to find something that is going to be the size you want. Now I like my circles to be different sizes, so I'll be making different circles. But this is a way to make a circle that's kind of foolproof. It's kind of fun to do. You're going to trace a circle around whatever object you have, whatever size, and you're going to just sew right on this circle line and just enclose a circle. You're going to have two pieces right sides together and we're going to enclose that circle. So let's just line these up and we're just going to follow this around in a circle here. So you're just going to go around this whole entire circle and you want to be careful to stay right on that line you've drawn. and just go all the way around and we're almost there alright there we are now what we're going to do is trim this so here's my scissors and I'm going to trim around it like this just leaving about a quarter of an inch just like this and then I'm going to pull these apart like this and the one that I want to be the back I'm just going to cut a little clip in like this just make a little V and then I'm going to turn it right from that hole push the whole circle through and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to run it all around the edge like this so that it makes a nice flat circle and then I'm going to come over here and press it and it should have a nice roundy 
circle. If you stayed on that line, it'll make a nice round circle. You won't have any edges to turn under, and it'll just look really cute in the middle of your flower. So if I did it on that flower, look how cute that would be. I mean, it's just big and fat. It's cute on this one also, and it's even cute on this one. So this, you could use the same size, but I think the different sizes are fun. You know, it, it just gives it a little different dimension. I have different size circles on here, and you can see how the circle completely changes the look of the flower. So the last thing you need to do is you need to attach everything. And so I'm going to show you that good ladder stitch that I like to use. And, um, and it's, just, it's just really easy. Honestly, if you can hem pants, you can do this. It just goes really well. So I'm left-handed, and so I'm going to have to start from this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my little picket fence right along the edge of here. And this, this is the same stitch that you're going to use on everything. So let me get this, let me get this stuff up here. <laughs> I've just knocked everything off, but it goes back pretty easy. So I'm going to come through from the back through the fold, right like that. So I'm through that fold. I'm going to go right back down where I came out, and I'm going to come up about a quarter of an inch and come right back out. And I'm just going to go along and do this. I'm going to go straight down, come up about a quarter of an inch. They don't have to be tiny or tight together because all we're going to do is quilt over the top of these. So we're just coming out that fold, going straight down. Here's some renegade threads there coming out this fold, going straight down, and coming down. Now, if you want to, you could machine stitch all these. You could do a blanket stitch. You could, you know, do a straight stitch across here. You could do all kinds of things. I kind of like to have some handwork to take with me in the car or to sit and do with my husband when he's watching TV at night. And so I really like this kind of handwork because it doesn't have to be careful or perfect. It just has to hold it down because I am literally going to quilt from one side of this to the other. Take a look at this one. You can see it's a small stipple, and I've just quilted straight across the sides. And even though I've, I've taken the time to sew these things down by hand, I haven't had to take tiny little stitches or, you know, do anything, you know, that's hugely heroic in attaching this stuff down. So I hope you enjoy making one of these Dresden flower wall hangings, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.